Hello guys, welcome today. I am here in the 2021 Mazda 3. Thanks once again to Modern Mazda here in Thomaston, Connecticut for lending me this car. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the Mazda 3 lineup as well as how this car compares uh, to its arch rivals in the Corolla and the Civic because those are the big names in this compact segment sedan and hatchback, the Japanese automakers that just make these cars that just run and run uh, and they're cheap to maintain. Now the Mazda 3 comes in sedan or hatchback version. You can get it in seven different flavors if you get the sedan. You can get it with three different powertrains. Uh, you can get the 2 liter engine, the 2.5 liter or the turbocharged 2.5 and the 2.5 with the turbo actually comes in all wheel drive as well and in the hatchback you lose that base with the 2.0 get in six different trim levels with the 2.5 liter or the turbocharged 2.5 and again that comes the all-wheel drive system when you get the hatchback now I am in the manual version here uh, and this car really means a lot to me personally my first uh, manual car was a Mazda 3 that was also the first car that I ever bought on my own. It was my first brand new car. And that car treated me really well. I was not good at driving stick. And I even at 100,000 miles when I sold it five years later, I still had the original clutch in it. So that was pretty cool. But you know, the lineup runs you anywhere between 20 grand in the base sedan, all the way up to the top tier uh, premium plus hatchback, which is up at 34 grand. Now we are here in the premium hatchback. This one is right around 28 grand MSRP. This is the only way you can get the manual. So if you want a stick, you are getting the premium hatchback, 28 grand MSRP. As much as I wish that Mazda still had a base model that you could get in a, a manual, I'm glad to see that they at least have the manual option available still. Fun fact, the 2012 Mazda 3, you could actually get a five-speed manual or a six-speed manual, depending on the trim level. If you know of any other cars that are like that, let me know down in the comment section below. Now, in recent years, Mazda has been making a big push towards luxury, and like I mentioned, they have all these different trim levels. They don't have a luxury brand, like Honda has an Acura and uh, Toyota has Lexus. So it's just Mazda, which is why they have this wide array of of trim levels uh, but once you start getting into that upper tier these really are luxury cars uh, it's not a luxury car price but it's still a luxury car feel which is a very important thing to note so in this one we're kind of up against the top tier Civic and the top tier Corolla the XSE Corolla and the Sport Touring Civic both of which are available with a six-speed manual so we're going to compare those as we're talking here. With Mazda's push towards luxury, you do get a very smooth and comfortable ride in here. This thing is not like the old Mazdas. The old Mazdas, as much as I loved my 2012, it did have a rougher ride. It was a lot louder in the cabin. This thing is nice and quiet. It is nice and smooth just has such a premium feel in here. You can get a whole slew of safety features whether you get the automatic or the manual, which is definitely not something you can get with the, all the, the manufacturers. There are some manufacturers out there, uh, even with the new 86 that was just announced. If you get the manual, you don't get all the safety features. So that's definitely kind of a big deal there. And I've got this nice heads up display here, which tells me my speed. It tells me the speed limit and even tells me that there's a stop sign right here. It is electric power steering, of course, and it does have some pretty nice heavy steering to it. It's not super communicative, uh, but it's not going to be a, in something like a Civic or a, a Corolla either. Um, but it is kind of a heavier feel. It's got a, a little bit of a sporty feel, which is pretty nice. And this manual transmission uh, is very smooth shifting. Uh, it, it's very notchy and there is no ambiguity about what gear you're in. Now, the clutch pedal is very light. It is about on par with the Civic and the Corolla. Those have very light clutches. This one is a little bit more communicative, I feel, um, even with it being so light. 
but again with this being more of a commuter car it's it's kind of nice that it does have that light clutch personally i prefer a heavier clutch but i also prefer that in something that's like a sportier car like especially in something like the, that's an actual sports car um but again it's light but it's still communicative which is very nice now the visibility in here is something that uh, if you've seen any other videos or anything on this, you've probably heard people complain about that. The pillars in the back are definitely uh, pretty large and the back window is not super big. That definitely does get in the way of the blind spot, but you do again have all the safety tech, all the latest safety features. Uh, you have blind spot monitoring and the visibility otherwise is actually pretty good outside of that blind spot there. It is up on power from the Civic and the Corolla and up on torque from both of those so uh, you can definitely feel it putting down the power pretty well it doesn't quite handle those twists and turns as well as mazda used to um, you do get a little bit of extra body roll but again this is more of a push towards luxury and you're probably not tracking this car or taking this you know hooning down some some twisty back roads this is more of your daily you know if you're merging on the highway or something and you really need to get going it will do that for you all right so from the outside here you can tell that they have made a lot of changes in recent years uh, to the shape i know this shape is a little bit polarizing they're definitely looking for that kind of luxury kind of clean feel uh, lots of rounded edges uh, it's definitely sort of a, a simple but elegant kind of look to it and I do think it's working out pretty well. Over here on these 18 inch wheels with all seasons, uh, you get those 18s unless you're in the bottom trim of the hatchback or the bottom two of the sedan, uh, in which case you get 16 inch wheels on those and this black finish here. That you get on these is only in the top three trim levels up front here again we're getting this simple but elegant look this color is also really nice on this car now you do get the led headlights across the lineup these are the led signature headlights which is uh, different if you get the upper three trims now, i mentioned that you have three different powertrain options this is the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine produces 184 horsepower, 184 pound-feet of torque. That is up on both the Civic and the Corolla. Uh, the Civic, we're talking about the Civic Sport because that's the one you can get in manual. The Sport Touring is actually the one that would compete with this premium package. That has a 1.5 liter turbo engine, so the torque is available down a little bit lower, um, but this does beat it out on power and torque by a, a few pound-feet and a few horsepower but if you get the Corolla XSE hatchback uh, that one is down at 169 horsepower 139 pound-feet of torque so this has a significant bump over those um, now if you do get the top tier Mazda 3 or the one of the top two tiers with the turbocharger engine you're up at 250 horsepower um, so that one will blow those others out of the water but you're again up at the 30 to 34k range and those come with a six-speed automatic versus the corolla and civics cvt so that's definitely a huge advantage as well mazda does not put cvts in anything uh, which i definitely love them for that coming back here to the back we've got a dual exhaust we've got this gloss black again led tail lights across the lineup these are the signature leds because we're in one of the top three trim levels here you also get this fin up here in the upper trim levels the hinge is hidden underneath here it's actually a button this one has 13.3 cubic feet of space which is actually quite a lot of room but the corolla is 17 and the civic is up around 22 that is class leading at the 22 but you do have room to fold those seats down and again this is still plenty of space this is definitely bigger than my gti and i can fit a ton of stuff in my gti 
Now back here in these back seats, I definitely have plenty of space on five foot seven front seat set to set for me. Um, I've got plenty of room back here. Uh, definitely a lot bigger than the Mazda 3s of the past. My 2012 Mazda 3 did not have this much room back here. We're at 30 in, 35 inches of leg room, uh, whereas in the Corolla, that extra space that you got in the hatch, you lose back here because that one's only 30 inches of leg room. So this is all gone, uh, but the front seat is about the same for all of those. Uh, and then in the Civic, you're at 36 inches, so you still um, get some room back there in the back of that one. Here in the front, we've got these nice leather seats in the premium trim and the turbo premium plus trim that's the top tier. Uh, you get the real leather seats. Uh, your options across the board are leatherette, cloth, or real leather here. Got the Bose sound system in this one. This is a 12 speaker Bose system versus the regular nine speaker sound system. Got your memory seat settings there. Push button start. Now this has such a nice modern feel to it. They do look like standard analog gauges, but they are actually digital, which is kind of an interesting thing that they've got going on there. That middle one, the pin is digital. Uh, and so is that screen in the back. So is everything uh, in the back of that. But on the sides, the pin is not digital. It's an actual uh, needle, whereas, but the display behind it is digital. So that's kind of cool. You do have your standard buttons here. This nice leather wrapped steering wheel that feels uh, very comfortable to hold on to. Automatic temperature control, nice classy looking shifter knob here. Again, feels really nice and smooth. Your reverse, push down. And there. Get the nice big backup screen. Now I did mention uh, in the Miata video, it has this knob here and these a few buttons down here to control the infotainment your volume knob so at least the volume knob is um, really nice and easy and accessible this thing they're trying to get away from that touch screen kind of feel and I mentioned in the Miata video that I thought it was a little bit cumbersome after playing around with it for a little while I don't think it's actually too bad I think you do kind of get used to it uh, you do have Android Auto Apple CarPlay in this of course uh, which is always a good thing to have one thing that I also really like in this is that you have access to your manual um, which is pretty cool there's a glove compartment pretty standard there there is no carpet in these these are hard plastic which is kind of an interesting move but these are nice and soft up here very soft up here nice classy feel here you've got your vents coming across and they look really nice your cup holders are up there i used to tell people and they asked me if i had any complaints about my second generation mazda 3 uh, i would say the cup holders because they were right behind the shifter they were back here and they would get in the way if i had a cup there putting them up here they're out of the way of the shifter that's a really nice little touch there this slides back and up got a usb port in there tons of space for stuff overall very comfortable very classy very modern feel in here pretty big difference from my 2012 Mazda 3 which I loved uh, but this is a lot classier of a place to be for sure got the electronic parking brakes not my favorite again commuter car this is not something I'm doing e-brake turns in not really too big of a deal Overall, this is a super comfortable place to be. And this, like I said, the shifter is excellent. The clutch is light, but communicative. You know, other than the visibility is not the best, but it's really perfectly livable uh, in, in terms of that visibility. 
overall definitely a comfortable place to be I would have no problem living with this car every single day in fact if I had found this car before I found my GTI there's a pretty good chance that I would have bought one of these instead thanks again to Modern Mazda for letting me take this car out uh, go check them out they're here in Thomas Connecticut. Uh, and if you have a car for me, jason at manual-cars.com. Send me an email. Doesn't necessarily have to be a manual car. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.